Well, just yesterday, lawsuits were filed against three e-cigarette companies right here in California, alleging they market to young people, which, if true, is not legal. Meanwhile, the biggest e-cigarette maker, Juul, isn't part of those lawsuits, but it is in the crosshairs of the FDA. This morning, we talked to Juul and to a leading scientist behind a groundbreaking study of e-cigarettes. And as you'll see, the results are alarming. Just when it seemed cigarette smoking was a thing of the past, a new and disturbing trend among young people, Juuling, the most popular brand of e-cigarettes, sleek and loaded with nicotine. It just became like more and more popular and everyone would just like huddle around in the bathrooms. Just everyone had it all at once. 18 year old Olivia Gordon is a college freshman. She says by senior year in high school, just about everyone she knew was jeweling. People would like hide them in their jacket sleeves and like would hold them up just in like in class and things like that. Gordon was part of a groundbreaking study to try and figure out if Juul or other e-cigarettes were bad for kids. I wanted to go right to the source so that we could actually see what toxins are in their body. Dr. Mark Rubenstein at the University of California, San Francisco, had so many patients asking him if e-cigarettes were safe, he decided to study kids who said they used e-cigarettes, including Juul. What did you learn? What are the highlights from the study? We found a lot of the same chemicals in the urine of these teenagers that we see in cigarettes. Much lower levels than traditional cigarettes, but higher than what we expect to find from just environmental exposures. Are any of these toxic? The five main chemicals that we found are either shown to be cancer-causing or thought to be cancer-causing, either in humans or animals. Well. Do we know what the long-term effects of using these e-cigarettes is? We don't. So even the fact that these were lower levels is still concerning. We don't know that these kids will continue to use for many years, but should they, we expect to see some of these same negative outcomes that we see with cigarettes. We fully acknowledge that there are youth using this product and it's not acceptable. Like, you know Ashley you Gould is the chief administrative officer of Juul Labs. Juul dominates the e-cigarette industry with 74% of the market share. The company, now valued at an astounding $16 billion, says the product was designed to give adult smokers an alternative to cigarettes. In fact, Juul claims research they paid for shows nearly 50% of smokers who use Juul stop smoking cigarettes. We know that cigarettes kill half of the people who use them. The potential of vapor technology is to deliver nicotine through an aerosolized form and avoid combustion and thereby avoid or significantly reduce the harm resulting from cigarette smoking. Is it safe? Do you know what the long-term effects of juuling are? I can't talk about safety of the product from a regulatory perspective. I'm asking you whether you know that the long-term effects of the use of Juul products is safe. Juul's been on the market since 2015. We have data from the time the product was on the market to now, and we will collect data over time. Isn't it irresponsible to put a product out there for adults or anybody else to purchase if you don't know the long-term effects? Again, I think the context is critically important. All I'm asking you is whether you have a product that you can tell me 30 years from now isn't going to be killing people from something else. There's growing scientific consensus that there is significantly less toxicants from e-cigarettes than from cigarettes. While the scientists we talked to agree, e-cigarettes appear to be far less harmful than regular cigarettes in the short run, it's unclear what the long-term effects are. Juul does contain nicotine. There is no dispute that nicotine is addictive. None. No, there's no dispute. We're not disputing that. And that in itself is a concern to many public health experts who worry that kids who experiment may not be able to stop once addicted to the nicotine and that that could lead to cigarette use. Unfortunately, there are an awful lot of unintended users of the product, and they happen to be kids. And it's critically important that youth are educated about the harms of nicotine, what we don't know about e-cigarettes, and why these are not products for them. We agree 100% with that.
What do you tell your patient? I strongly recommend against it. There's no reason healthy adolescents should be exposing themselves to even potentially cancer-causing substances. So do you think it's bad for you? Yeah, I know it's bad for you. And that doesn't stop you? No, it doesn't stop me. A lot of things are bad for you that you still do. And that has a lot of parents very concerned. Well, Juul Labs pushed back on Dr. Rubenstein's study, saying you can't draw conclusions about any one e-cigarette brand from it because the kids in the study were self-reporting which products they were using. Now, meanwhile, the FDA is so concerned about e-cigarette use among kids, they are now considering taking some e-cigarettes off the market, perhaps even banning the flavors that kids prefer. Their decision expected soon. Back to you guys. All right, Cynthia, thank you. And Cynthia is going to have a lot more for us tonight on NBC Nightly News. Thank you. Have a deep dive into Mm -hmm. that. Thank you, Cynthia.